Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many of you, True Ned, and welcome back to Skyrim, where on our long journey to retrieve the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller, we've made it here to Morthal, our final stop on the road, technically, but yeah, very grim, grey sort of a stop, to be honest, but the townspeople seem scared of something, I'm pretty sure it's vampires. As I say, like, you know, I know this game a bit, but I don't remember all of the details. I'm pretty sure it's vampires, so probably I ought to go and help out with that. Have you seen my mother? I'm still waiting for her to come home. And also, this kid's missing mother. I'm not sure whether we can actually help him. No, no, wait, wait. Your mother may be a vampire. Hang on, come back here, you. No, he doesn't actually care to give me a quest to find his mother, so I can't be bothered to help him in that case. Also, I don't want to alarm anyone, but, um, this horse... This horse literally has a hole in it, so I just noticed at the top of the stairs. Um, if we go to the top of the stairs here, hang on, we go right up here, then uh, this horse, you can literally see straight through it. It's got its tail held right up behind it, and I can see straight through the horse. Marvellous, I kind of want this horse for my own. That will be stealing the rich guy who came to town. That was his horse, he decided to park it right outside the flipping inn. Very presumptuous of him, he's literally blocking a staircase. Right, probably best. We start having a chat to the Jarl and see what we can do from there. You need to leave. Really? Do I? Okay. The door was open. Why was the door open if you didn't want me there? Is it because it's too early in the day? Okay, I've let an hour pass. Maybe they'll let me in without threatening me with dire consequences now. Yeah? Are we good now? Is everything fine? All right, lovely. It's a bit dark in here, by the way. Would anyone actually mind if I just kind of lit up the room? There we are, just subtly show off my magical ability there. Marvellous. Right, you there, ruler of this place. What's going on here and can I help? You look sick. I hope it's not contagious. Oh dear, well in that case I may as well go and visit a shrine at some point. So, what's the trouble I've been hearing about here? That which is unknown can create unease, even fear. It is to be expected. Some fear our new resident wizard. As they grow to know him, they will accept him. Time will prove me right. Okay, maybe it's not vampires. Maybe it's actually just the wizard. We may well go speak to the wizard in that case. Ah, this guy here, the guy who was threatening me with dire consequences, he might be willing to answer my questions. Yeah, what were the people bothered about? Was it the wizard or was it something else? Ah, you saw that, did you? Life in Morthal has been troubled lately. The people are uncertain, restless, nearly look to the Jarl for leadership. Whatever it is, these people don't seem willing to talk about it. Yeah, tell me what's actually wrong here. There's news of rebellion against the Empire. Strange noises have been heard in the marshes at night. And then, the tragedy with Rogar's home. The men simply seek wisdom. Everything will be fine. Noise in the marsh, tragedy with someone's house. Okay. Ah, yes, and of course, this is very much an Imperial town. There's actually an Imperial bloke right here. Hello there. And interestingly, we can actually ask a senior commander in the Imperial Legion what he feels about the war. I'm gonna guess he's pro-Legion, to be honest. Ah, yes, and someone was saying I was sick. Now, am I actually sick? So I'm gonna assume I am, given multiple people have mentioned it. Ah, rock joint 25% less effective with melee weapons. Yes, that is a bit of a big deal. Fine. Not the worst disease you can catch, but I'll definitely sort that out next time I run into a shrine. It's Valiant. He... he did it. I don't know what it was, but he did it. That actually might be something interesting to remember for later. It would appear that the children of the Arl also kind of share her weird far-seeing gift. And yeah, the little boy just yelled, something was Falion. Doesn't know what Falion did, but something is the fault of Falion. Intriguing. Ah, here we are. Falion's house, right here in front of the horrible, horrible swamp marsh thing. Beautiful. Here's the man himself. Lovely inside. Yeah, his little house. He doesn't actually live in the uh, the Jarl's quarters. Unlike Faringar. That's a shame. And he's got himself, ooh, a big pile of soul gems, but it would be stealing. Oh, but one book here. Nice, enchanting goes up. That is a useful skill for me. Very good indeed. Right, now if I recall correctly, you're actually pretty damn good. You might be selling some good stuff I could use. If you stand before me to accuse me of sacrificing children or eating the hearts of the dead, you may save your breath. I have done no such thing, nor do I intend to. I simply wish to live my life in peace. Okay, I wasn't thinking that you sacrificed children before, but now you brought it up. The people of Morthal would much rather weave their own horrid tales about my life than simply ask me for the truth. If they choose to fear me in their ignorance, that's their choice. But it will not change what is true. So if everyone hates you, why exactly are you here in Morthal at all? As anyone will tell you, 
Morthal can be a dangerous place. My talents are useful here. I help maintain order, even if it goes unnoticed. Hmm, interesting. And apparently you are a conjuration trainer. So he's a master level conjuration trainer. And yeah, he could get me up to the next levels of conjuration for 480 go. That'll get more expensive. That's fine. Conjuration, I'm not really having too much of a problem leveling. If it was a skill I wanted to get up faster than I am getting it up, like, say, illusion, I might consider it. But I'll hold off training in conjuration for now. And he's got a few books I haven't seen before. Banish Daedra, Weaken Summon Daedra, Sent Back to Oblivion. I don't feel like I need that urgently. But, aha! This is something I've been waiting to see. Conjure Frost Atronach. Summons a Frost Atronach for 60 seconds, wherever the caster is pointing. My Flame Atronach is, well, my Flame Atronach is kind of like indirect fire support. It's not good at tanking. But a Frost Atronach, yeah, that's what I wanted to see. Totally buying that. That is absolutely 100% worth it. Oh, and he's got Revenant too. The next level of flipping conjuration in terms of raising the dead. Oh, yeah, I'm spending all my flipping money at you. Every flipping time. Oh, that's so good that you've got those spells. Learn them right now. Learn and learn and I am happy. Now, uh, the downside is these spells are going to be really, really flipping expensive. Because I assume they're both adept level magic and I don't have the half adept magic reduction thingy yet. So, I'm guessing... Uh, let's have a look-see. We've got... Actually, you know, I can probably do a new one. No, I won't turn that off yet. I will favour this one. That's 164... And as for Revenant, I'll also probably turn off Zombie. I'll just kind of cast. If I know I don't need Revenant, I'll just do Reanimate Corpse. It's pretty cheap to do already. And Revenant is 140 as well. So, yeah, 164 and 140. I've got... What do I have right now? I've got 148. So, I can do it. It will just drain, like, half my magic bar in one go if I want to do that. And I'm assuming the whole Adept Conjuration thing is, yeah, at 50. So I need seven more Conjuration before I can do that. Uh, but I'd say, all things considered, that's actually looking pretty promising, actually. You know, one thing I've never really looked at before is the Restoration Tree, because normally I just get on with just basic healing, and it works kind of pretty well, just fine for the entire game. But uh, what I didn't realise was in here was flipping Recovery. Magicka regenerates 25% faster, and I could afford it right now. I really might want to put the odd skill point into restoration. That is uh, interesting. And once they heal... Ooh, that's good. I'll be that's a very long way off. But that's kind of nice, actually. Healing spells also restore stamina. That's okay. There's apparently loads of really damn good stuff in restoration. I've just never really bothered paying any attention to before. I should totally flipping have a look at all of this. You need to leave. What did I do? All right, fine. I'll get up before you attack me. Yes. Okay. That's now locked. Despite the fact it's it's 1 p.m. Is this just his nap time or something? Ooh, have you got an actual shop here? Uh, possibly. Or maybe a bar or possibly an alchemy place. I'm genuinely not sure. You could do with a better sign. So that's somewhat unclear. This feels like an alchemy type shop. Lovely. Ah, this woman learnt what she knows about alchemy from a book, Song of the Alchemist. If I find a copy, I'll bring it to you. Yes, sure. Because I'm pretty sure you trade that for, like, two or three points in alchemy or something. So, may as well, if I happen to find one. So, you're interested in my potions and ingredients? Not desperately, but I will say, if you happen to have some really good stuff like this, I'll consider it. Because having a blacksmith's potion in your back pocket, just for next time that I actually do need to do some blacksmithing... 40% improving is a really, really big upgrade, especially as I haven't really been investing in smithing myself. So being able to basically just get, yeah, things 40% better. You know what? I will buy that from you right flipping now. And go on then, save myself some time. I'll just buy one of those for only 200. I will cure my disease. Lovely. And we've got Benor here wearing his heavy armor who claims he is the toughest guy in this town and can take me barehanded. I wonder if I beat the hell out of him, maybe, just maybe, he'd actually be willing to side with me and come with me as a companion. Go on then, let's brawl, if you want to be my companion, I'm kind of in the market for a new one. Just your own two hands. Weapons and magic are out. Now let's see what you've got. Yeah, but I bet it's normal rules apply where actually I can use healing magic as much as I want. Because in all fairness, this is actually just bonus light armor skill. So it's kind of worth having just for the light armor skill and the restoration. Don't stand too close, because if I accidentally hit you, you're going to object. And if I use healing magic, yep, no one actually minds, and I get my restoration up as well. Beautiful. Brawling on the really, really high difficulties is just so flipping stupid. 
It is just the most ridiculous endurance event where you spend five minutes punching each other in the face. But I will take it just for the restoration and light armor skill. Right, this should be about it. And last punch. Down he goes. Screw you. I am the toughest man in Morthal. Assuming I'm allowed to run away and heal like five or six times. You're a real fighter. I like that. You ever need my steel by your side? You just ask. Beautiful. You are my new companion. Welcome aboard. You've been a good friend to me. That means something. You've been a good friend to me. We met five minutes ago, I blatantly cheated in a fist fight and stole a hundred gold off you, but nope, I've been a good friend to him, come along, you're coming with me. Now, something of course I kind of already knew but didn't really mention previously. Um, yeah, the way that Skyrim makes its high difficulties more difficult is basically just by cheating. It doesn't really do anything, like, interesting. It just basically says, you do less damage, enemies do more damage. But companions don't play by those same rules. Companions don't get their damage downgraded. So there's an excellent chance that a companion is going to be able to stand up to more than you and deal more damage. So potentially, me helping out this guy by kind of using healing hands and courage on him, potentially he's going to do much better at frontlining than I am. So anyway, we've got him on board now. That's all good stuff. Anything good here? Because yeah, we've got... This is the inn. Might be a good source for quests. And then, ah, a tragedy this guy's house. I think there's something about, like... A ghost or a note? There's some form of mystery to solve there anyway, but let's check at the inn first. Yep, here we are. Is there a story behind that burned down house? Because you know there was a tragedy of some guy called, like, Progar or something? Progar's house? It burned down not too long ago. It's a real pity about his wife and kid. The screams woke half the town. Most folk won't go near it now for fear it's cursed. Oh dear. Why do we get the feeling that potentially Progar, if he's still alive, might have been responsible for that? Hrogar claims it was a hearth fire. Some folks say Hrogar started it himself. Yeah, I'm one of those. That's what they say. See, he's living with Alva now. That started the day after the fire. It ain't right moving in with a new love the day after your kin die like that. Our Jarl would sure like to know if he did, though. Might even pay to find out. Alright, later. Ooh, we do have a quest here. Very, very nice indeed. Right, talk to the Jarl about that. And oh my goodness, do you actually have an orc bard? That's amazing. A new face. Such a welcome sight in dreary old Morthal. Welcome, friend. Welcome. I like this guy. He's the friendliest guy I've run into in days. I'm a bard. Trained at the Bard's College in Solitude. Wanderers like you should think about applying. Yeah, fun coincidence, actually. I just actually picked up a book down the road I suspect they might be really interested in seeing. Right, I think I've explored all of the houses, so let's start off speaking to the Jarl like the bartender suggested. Sift through the ashes that others are too fearful to touch. See what they tell you. Should you prove him guilty or innocent, I will reward you. Ah, uh, yes, of course, because people consider it cursed, therefore the crime scene hasn't been touched. Useful. So, ruined house back here, and I'm guessing now we've got something in the house we can actually have a little looksy for. Ah! Like a ghost! That's bloody convenient! The ghost of the child, yes, hello there! Who's there? Is that you, father? Uh, no, a random investigator and his supposed friend I just beat the hell out of, actually. Who are you? I asked the character labelled Helgi's ghost. Helgi, but father says I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Are you a stranger? No, 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 I'm totally a friend. Uh, now, by any chance, do you have any idea what actually happened here? The smoke woke me up. I was hot and I was scared, so I hid. Then it got cold and dark. I'm not scared anymore. But I'm lonely. Will you play with me? If you do, will you tell me to set the fire? Yep, absolutely I will play with you. Okay, let's play hide and seek. You find me and I'll tell you. We have to wait for nighttime, though. The other one is playing too, and she can't come out until then. The other one? Okay, why am I suddenly a bit worried about the other one? I can't tell you. She might hear me. She's so close. If you can find me first, I can tell you. Okay. 
something's gone wrong here. I'm sure I've done this quest once in the past, but I've forgotten everything about it. I can't remember whether he did it or not, and I can't remember what the other one is. So, all right, looks like, oh, that's nice. It's been a horrible, great day. Benno, 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 ben there we go. Uh, yeah, it's been a horrible, great day all day, but finally, it's lovely. Dusk's here, so it's almost night already. That's bloody convenient. By the way, I know it's a bit odd that I've kind of gone for the lighting mod. That means it's really dark inside, but at night outside, it's still fairly light. But I think that's actually fairly excusable, because, like, Skyrim has quite a few moons floating around. And they seem quite big and close. So I feel like they would probably actually cast quite a bit of light. Logically, the moonlight in Skyrim would be quite a bit brighter than the moonlight in our world. Oh, now, I've got no quest marker for the little girl, which means I just have to find her. Now, there can't be that many places around town. Town's not that big, and I'm assuming she won't leave town. I've explored it already. So, let's just nip around here, see if we can find her. Oh, I was just looking for the girl, and round the back of the town I found this random person. Who are you exactly? Also, I'm not sure your head ought to be at that angle with your neck. That doesn't look comfortable or healthy. And finally, actually, let's just give this a go. Yeah, who? Who are you exactly? You are- Ah, you're a vampire! Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you courage! And I missed you with courage. Right. Courage! There, I've couraged you. And then I'm going to heal you up a bit. Lovely. Yeah, there's just a flipping vampire up here. Interesting. By any chance, are you the other that was mentioned? Yes, actually. Child's Coffin. Okay. You found me. Laylot was trying to find me too, but I'm glad you found me first. Laylot was told she's to burn mommy and me, she's, but he didn't want she's to. She's a vampire. He wanted to play with me forever and ever. He kissed me on the neck. And I got so cold that the fire didn't even hurt. Leila thought she could take me and keep me. She's dead. But she can't. I'm all burned up. She's a vampire. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep for a while now. So the child was actually killed not by the fire, but by a vampire. But potentially the fire would have killed her if the vampire hadn't. So are we in like a manslaughter bit of territory right now? I'm not sure. Leila, she's dead. He's your beard. She's... She's a vampire! So, Laylet is apparently known to Thonis, so what did you know about this whole situation? Laylet is dead. Ah, so your wife was a vampire and you didn't know? Laylet? I thought she left to join the Stormcloaks. Oh, my poor Laylet. So, anything suspicious you could tell me about? She began to spend a lot of time with Alva, yet just a week before. She despised her. In fact, the night she disappeared, she was supposed to meet Alva. Alva told me later that she never showed up. I never got to tell her goodbye. Ooh, I think potentially uh, Alva might be a vampire too. But in which case, what's the point of moving Throgar from one guy to another? Or was the fire an excuse to let Laylet drink someone's blood without anyone realising because the crime scene was about to be destroyed. You think Alva? But that means... Ye gods, you think Alva is a vampire? Well, it's possible, but to be honest, I've got literally no solid evidence whatsoever. No, you're wrong. You must be wrong. Laylet may have met her fate out in the marsh. I refuse to believe Alva had anything to do with this. There is no way you can prove it to the Jarl. I hope Alva is not what you think. Okay, so investigate Alva's house, see if we can find any more flipping evidence of what's going on here. So yes, it is vampires. <laughs> Turned out it was vampires after all. Now, Alva's house, I think, was the second one round here, just round the corner from the Jarl's place. Because that's the guard house, that's the wizard's house. So I think this is Alva's house right here. Yep, but locked up. And I'm guessing, as it's night, Alva's gonna- Oh, wait, hang on. Vampire! Probably not! And as it turns out, someone's definitely here. Oh, you've seen me now! I'll have your head. Yeah. Right, if I come in, Throgar's here, and this guy just basically murders Throgar. So, probably, we shouldn't do that, in fact. No, let's actually go in- He said he yielded! No, let's just reload outside for a second and wait till daytime to see if we can just sneak in here without him realising. There we are, Throgar just leaving the house, being on his way, marvellous. And he's willing to give me money for wood too. 
Anything else you're willing to tell me? Uh, actually, you know what? Let's not speak to him just yet because I don't know whether or not he might be in on it. So just as quickly hide behind him and crack open the door. So now we can sneak inside, have a little shifty round, help myself to a little bit of gold and whatever. If this guy's potentially murdered his wife and sleeping with a vampire, I basically have no compunction whatsoever from robbing him blind. Immortal... He's got a book called Immortal Blood. Alright, that reflects badly on him. Quest marker brings me down here and they do need to have a basement. Alva's cellar. And we've got... Ah! We have got ourselves Alva, right flipping here, who is holding a key, a soul gem, 150 gold. We probably shouldn't just make assumptions. Just because she sleeps in a basement, in a coffin, doesn't mean she is necessarily a vampire, but... I'm going to be honest, it is rather likely, yes. So what I'm going to do is take this lovely opportunity to actually summon, for the first time, a Frost Atronach. Ease off the magic, she says. There we are. I've got an Atronach now. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you 100% sure? Because now I've got an Atronach and a big tough friend. <laughs> That's right, everyone batter her. Hold still. There we are. And I'm just going to heal you up. Lovely. So you're now going to have loads and loads of health. Yeah, he's got tons of health. She's basically not got much at all. So, yep, just keep going. Keep healing him up. Restoration going up nice and quickly from that. I think that's an apprentice spell, actually. So that's working well. Where'd my... Excuse me, you... I think he's stuck in a corner. All right, fair enough. Right, just keep healing you up. So I think she had, yep, 150 gold on her. I'll have myself a key and some soul gem and whatever. Vampire dust too. That's probably a good bit of proof right there. And we've also got, ah, she kept her journal here. Now I understand the true colours of the night. Morvarth has shown me the true black of night and the true red of blood. He has promised me a feast of blood if I do his bidding in Morthal. Okay. So we now know the name of the head vampire who's been arranging this whole little vampire is Coven the right word? I'm going to say Coven. So, Leilet came to visit Alva. Alva turned her into basically an undead thrall thing. So she rose as a handmaiden. So really she was working for Alva. And one time she is to seduce the guardsmen and make them her slaves, I see. And then, the oh, Coven! I was right, it does say Coven. And once literally everyone's been like enslaved or seduced or whatever, then take the town, don't kill them. They're simply cattle for our thirst. Ooh, that's slightly creepy. And it wasn't Throgar that actually killed them, it was Laylet. I've told Laylet to kill them all. But, if Throgar's job was to guard you during the day, does that mean he knew you were a vampire? In which case, he might still be guilty of something pretty damn bad. At the bare minimum, if you know your girlfriend is a vampire, then that's the sort of thing you do tell other people, because vampires do seem to be a bit on the dangerous side. Still, we know what we need to do, show the journal to her, see what she wants to do next. Is Hrogar innocent or not? Well, Alva set the fire, she's the murderer, but to be honest, we should get on to the bigger thing, which is, she was actually a vampire, and technically, wait, did Alva set the fire? No! No, she didn't! Leilet set the fire! We established this! It's just she was working under Alva's orders. Alva? Huh, didn't think she had it in her. And she's a vampire and she planned to enslave the town. Yeah, we should have opened with that one, that's more important. I assume you have proof? Can't go making accusations like that without proof. And here's her journal. So it's true, the traitorous bitch. Morthal owes you a debt. Here, you were promised a reward for solving the crime, but I need one more favor from you. Morthal is still in danger. The journal mentions Movarth, a master vampire I thought was destroyed a century ago. I'll gather together some able-bodied warriors to clean out Movarth's lair. They'll be waiting outside for you to lead them. Ooh, this feels good. This feels very good. I've got myself a big tough companion I can actually keep alive. We've also got ourselves our new Frost Atronach, who while he struggled a bit in confined spaces, in a more open room would do very, very nicely indeed. And then beyond that, we've got some more able warriors too. Yeah, we're going with quite a crowd to deal with the vampires. And indeed, I think technically Benor has actually joined the ranks of them, because he's drawn his weapon when I haven't. So I think he's actually reverted from not being my companion to being one of the angry mob instead. Right. The mill is my responsibility. And that's what I care about. That's all. Understand? 
Uh, to be honest, no, we've got bigger problems. A few people have headed on their way while we were talking about his water mill. Right, I'm going to follow them. They presumably know where we're flipping going. And as for me, healing hands in one hand, glass axe in the other. That should all do very, very nicely indeed. So out we go into the swamp. This place looks dangerous. Yeah, kind of scary too. And it's full of vampires? Cowards, we must kill the vampires. We have to make them pay. Of course, but why not let her go in first? Right, so they're gonna hang outside like cowards. The problem is, right now, are you, my companion, gonna pretend you're one of the town folk? Because you're kind of standing around outside like you're part of their group, not part of mine. No, I've lost my one companion because he's technically stuck outside hiding, so we've gone from having a massive angry mob to back me up to literally nobody. Great. Don't panic, I've got Revenant, I've got my Frost Atronach, Potentially, this is all going to work just fine anyway. And before we even get to the vampires, we've got some flipping spiders and whatever to kill. Right. For spiders, no need to bother with a frost atronach or anything. Let's just actually get ourselves one basic flame atronach over there. Lovely. Yeah. And they are obviously going to go straight for me, not for the flame atronach. And just a couple of fireballs in there to finish you off. Ooh, lucky dodge. And I think you go down. Lovely. Now, got to use my new magical powers to take out a master vampire. That's going to be a little bit on the tricky side, to be honest, but we shall see. Now, any chance that I could double fury that guy over there? So charge it up, let it go, and that worked. I don't think there was anyone else in the room. I think he's currently furious, but he's got no one to hunt. Though on the plus side, we know if fury can affect that guy, he can't be that tough. And we also know there's no one else in here, or he would have already attacked them. In which case, can we potentially sneak up behind you and get the, what is it, 5x damage multiplier off that? Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Right behind him. Ignore the giant floating thing of light. It's not important. Vampire's thrall. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Now back here we've got, ah, round the back we've got carts full of corpses. Lovely. Right, so this guy was guarding where they keep all the corpses. Fine, the pantry if you like. You just stay here with all your friends and I'm going to go get my shovel. Are you talking to corpses? Right, now prepare, oh, I see you down there. I see movement down there and someone's coming. Put a frost atronach on top of you. Lovely. There we go. Now, you should be able to tank for me quite effectively. This guy is... Oh, yeah, this is much more what I wanted out of a country creature. It's tough. It's bulky. One-handed going up. I can just get behind this guy and wail on him because this guy can just... Oh, yeah. And... Oh, yeah, that's way better. That's so much nicer. And you were indeed talking to a pile of corpses while standing in a grave. Lovely. You know what? Me and you are going to be friends from now on. All right? Me and you are going to be such good friends. Now, what do we have up ahead here? Another room. Probably another vampire's thrall. But yeah, it feels to me like... Oh, who's that over there? Are you the guy? Because you might be. Oh, no. No, there's... Well, there are at least two people in that room. So on this occasion, if I could get a Fury to work, then that would actually be nice. Yeah, they're definitely all too strong for Fury. I've been tossing in some Furies. We haven't been getting much out of it. They all resisted. But, can't help but notice that in this room here, we have got ourselves something potentially useful, which is, yeah, the game's just laid out this giant pile of corpses just for flavour. And there was also, yeah, there was you here, who we've also killed. A vampire's thrall, a bit I've already taken his clothes off him. So, uh, I would count at least six bodies in this room. And you know what that means? That's right, the ritual stone. So, guys, everyone up, please. There we go, you and you and, yep, every single one of you. So, there was four people in this pit. And you're getting up as well, please. Yep, that's fine. All of you with me. All of you come in this direction. Come on. That's... Why are you guys not following me? Wait, there we go. You guys are coming out of the grave. <laughs> you guys are all coming out of the grave. That's nice. 
Now what I need to do to back you guys up, of course, is bring in a Frost Atronach. Come, come my zombie army. That's right, that's good. Now, no, 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 no. So now we hide down here. And now I just toss a Frost Atronach in the front door. There we go. Wait, what? Why did you all die? Oh, am I not allowed? Oh dear. I may have made a slight tactical error there. Right, okay, right. Hit a few of you with Marked for Death if we can. Marked for Death and you've already defeated the Atronach, haven't you? Right, I see the problem. And also you're bringing more people back from the dead. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm realising the problem here. I'm realising the problem. Okay, rethink plan. Right, all of you up. I know technically most of you don't have any weapons, but you will potentially distract effectively for me. Right, and back this up with some healing hands and a war axe. But this time, don't call in the frost attracts, it counts as undead. Anyone interested in coming to find me? And hit them with Mark for Death. Now, we've lured one of them round here. What I want to do now is, yeah, all of you need to pile in here. Now, I stay up here and basically hit this guy with lightning for a bit while everyone just piles around him. And as far as we can, so he just slowly murders everyone. And as soon as you guys run into trouble, I just basically conjure a flame at Trinac and then basically get him down as far as I can. But he's, he's got quite a bit of health, as it turns out, because he gets it back. That, that's the thing, isn't it? He gets it actually back afterwards. So probably what I need to do at this point is prepare for the... That's... You were supposed to be on my side! Right, okay, now I probably start running at this point. Um, and kind of hope maybe I can separate a few of them out from each other if we're lucky. Right, here we go. Ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. If they're willing to follow me up, then we've now got the... Yep, there you are. You're kind of stuck in a corner for whatever reason. They weirdly seem to be struggling to, um, to find me. Uh, I think they're really struggling to navigate upwards, actually. That's, that's the problem. If they can't make it up here, I could potentially go back into Hidden right now, having done at least a little bit of damage to him. But potentially... If he's wandered off in that direction, could I get the attention of two of them without all of them? I put you right about here. I think I might be able to draw one of them in, but not all of them. Okay, now, yep, she comes over and takes care of this. I think that's just her. And if it is potentially just her, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Oh, no, 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 go. I want you to go for the this guy, though. Oh, you know what? I'm already infected with the vampire disease. Right. No, 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 no. Go for them. Get, just let the target change over to him. Yep, fine. And now I can get some. Oh, blimey. But she does change target a bit. Need to go over to healing for a second. And this is going to take longer than 60 seconds. So I'm going to need to be ready to cast a second one of you in. Okay, now we're Frost Atronax holding recently for now. I've hit both of you with Marked for Death. Luckily, she is reasonably well staggered by his attacks. Go on. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Oh my goodness, we actually killed one of them. Okay, that's a blooded vampire dead. That is a good flipping start. And I think there were three people in there. So one of them is now dead. It might have been four. I think it was just three. Let's just see if we can lure you out a little bit. Let's just get a basic fire bolt on you. Come on, come in this direction. That's right. That's right. Come in this direction. Come in this direction. You should probably see where I am. Question is, uh, are your friends going to follow? And now block up the corridor with my Frost Atronach. Lovely, that will stop him for the time being. And also, just quickly put ourselves a nice mark for death through all three of you. Now, actually, question. Can I heal up an Atronach? I don't know whether you can or not. I'm going to give it a go now. So healing hands. And we can... No, he resists that. Fine. So he's doing some damage to those guys, but he's going down so fast at this point I should probably back off. And basically say, you know what? Good starting point, not perfect. Prepare for another one, though. I think they're still vaguely nearby. And if I just throw another one right here again. There we go. There's another one. Screw you. And once again, gets marked for death on you. Just keep whacking him. That will just stun him for a bit. Yeah, you see, I like your stab into the ground that seems to stun him. That does good work. And then just time to flee back upstairs. Oh, I think we might have actually just managed to take down or almost take down one more by just hanging out up here. Basically using the flipping flame Atronax, in fact. Yep, I think another one just went down. 
Good, just keep hitting him with Mark for the Death and the Bub. Now, I know some people are saying in the comments, oh, Mark for the Death so overpowered. Uh, no, um, Skyrim unofficial patch fixed it a bit. It's no longer so ridiculous. It's still all right, it's just not quite as ridiculous as it once was. So now, I think actually, we're down to just that guy. I think he's now the last one left. He's struggling to get over to me. So now, I think possibly, ooh, blimey. I might be able to go down with a Frost action I can oh, blimey, yes, I might actually be able to have a chance. Except for the fact he's finally flipping managed to make his way up the steps, which he hadn't done so far. So that's embarrassing. Right, you, I need you to block for me for a second. There we are, you're blocking effectively now, right? Lovely. Right, now, now let's do this properly. Two on one, screw you, Master Vampire. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, there we go. Beat him with a shield, don't let him do anything. Batter a bit. Oh, yes! Finally! Oh, flipping finally. I love you. You are coming for a kiss. Mwah! Oh, you are my favourite. Thank you for making her feel better. And the kid gets to go to sleep. Now, what did you have on you that was in any way good, if anything? You've got light armour. Not so hot. A jade and emerald crest, though. I'll take that. You know what? No, 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 no. There's got to be like a chest at the back of all of this. We're totally going to finish this off now. There we go. Last few rounds here. This guy is now in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't you go for me. Don't you go for me. No, we don't. You're trying to block. You're trying to block. You're coming for me for whatever reason. But that's fine because that guy can just totally do some lovely work to you. I think you are. Yep. You're dead. Screw you. And I think we've got one more left here yet. I think there might be just one final one in here. This is why we need to lure the leader away, because, yeah, this room's too crowded. There we are, conjuration up to 44. We've still got a few people floating around yet, and I've leveled up off that too. But this guy's an archer, and archers are never as flipping bad, so... Nice bit of space between... No, keep your distance. Right, now... Now we've got marked for death on this, but not on my guy. Which is marvellously good news. There we go. You are rapidly running into trouble, my good man. Yeah, there's a weirdly large number of people here after the room with the boss in it. Right, so one left, and now you're kind of trapped up there with my flipping Frost Atronach. So well done. You think you can take me? Yeah, to be honest, I think he can. I think he's got your number. Oh, yeah, I love his big stompy ground pound ability. No, no, no. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. Get around the back of you. Prepare to put another marked for death on you and then just jump behind him. And he's temporarily died, but she's down to half health. So just wait for her to come to me. And there we are. Now we just fall behind you if we can. Lovely. And he will do a very good job completely blocking up the hallway so she can't even get to me if she wants to. And yeah, now it's kind of one-on-one. -on -one. He can basically do the stompy spell over and over, which is great fun. Mercy, she says. Mercy. Hang on. Flame, uh, Frost Antronach. No, let me throw. Let me. You know what? Never mind. You finish her off then. I don't care. As long as one of us does it. Just let me. Let me throw. Let me. Frost Antronach. Me and you are going to have problems if you don't let me throw. There we go. We faded away. And back here, this is just where they kept the potions. Lovely. And also the main chest. Lovely. Good reward chest. Come on. Good stuff. Gold lockpick. Scroll of Blizzard. Another scroll. And a lightning bolt book. That's what you were keeping in your secret bloody hell. Well, you know what? Never mind. It's fine. I'm happy with it. You know why I'm happy with it? Because I got a level up out of all of this. And my health is... My health is currently low. Ah, now I'm pretty sure I am a vampire. Yes. But I'll get my magicka up. Absolutely. Now, is there anything I can do in Conjuration? I think right now, well... Hmm. Allowing it to last longer, but it's not more powerful. Summon it from twice as far away. Of interest, potentially. Would love this, but I'm sick short of it. So that's sort of good, but no, I think... I should have a look see at this. Restoration. Get Novice Restoration going. And then... Yeah, Regeneration. Recovery. Both of them of interest. This would have all been much easier, by the way, if my flipping companion had been willing to come inside with me rather than being a massive coward. But yeah, I've most definitely picked up the whole vampire thing. Uh, can I sort that out with my potion of curing disease? Because uh, it is currently a disease, not like a change of species. And yes, indeed, I have got rid of that vampirism like that. Lovely. Now, I'm fully aware, of course, technically becoming a vampire might actually be a good thing for me to do. There is absolutely an argument 
for saying that I might want to in the future become a proper vampire lord, but not quite yet, I don't think. But uh, yeah, absolutely, illusion and sneak bonuses, potentially very much of interest. Congratulations, completely bloody useless people. I've sorted literally everything for you. Ah, but on our way back, can't help but notice that very, very close by to Morthal, that looks like a flipping standing stone thing to me. That's the standing stone symbol, isn't it? Close by to a tower I'm not interested in right now. Yep, getting very, very close to this. I'm pretty sure that's a standing stone. I've no idea. Yep, that's a standing stone, all right. Question is... Which one? Because I've no bloody clue. Right, Apprentice Stone. So, under the sign of the Apprentice, recover Magicka faster, more susceptible to Magicka damage. Hmm. That's interesting, actually. But I don't want to be more susceptible. Well, I do have good magic resistance already, and I can activate um, Dragon Skin if I need to. I find the ritual too hilarious, but remember that's there. That's actually potentially of interest. Right, following morning, and I've got good news for you. Oh, well, bad news first. Um, it turns out literally everyone in your town is a massive coward. Well, look at you. If only everyone acted like you did. Oh, that's very generous of you. By the way, would you like to make me Thane? Because I love being Thane. By the eight, I didn't think he could do it. Now maybe we can put all this behind us. Take this as a token of our gratitude. 800 gold, lovely, and anything else you need, my yarl. There is room in my court for a new thing. It's an honorary title mainly, but there are a few perks someone like you could make use of. However, I could only grant the title to someone who is known throughout my hold. You help my people, and I'll make you my thing. I've literally just flipping defeated the vampire conspiracy that was going to take over your town and had already successfully murdered two people. And I've killed the master vampire. How is that not good enough? Assist the people two out of three. I dislike you immensely. Oh, and you're back. You're flipping back, are you? Oh, so lovely to see you back having cowered out, you bastard. I guess the only thing remaining is, yeah, killing that uh, giant. There was a bounty for killing a giant that was given to me inside that hold. Though apparently that is actually 10 million miles away and absolutely nowhere flipping near Morthal, so I'm certainly not bothering with that. Um, what else could it be? I've done the vampire thing. I've sorted out the mess over there. I've spoken to the court wizard. He didn't want anything. There was no quest for anything at the inn apart from dealing with the beginning of the vampire quest and the missing person. So it wasn't that. So I have literally no idea who the other person who wants flipping help is with. And I can't be bothered with your stupid ungrateful town, damn it. Next time, we are heading out into the wilderness. Because uh, contrary to what I was expecting, uh, yeah, the actual... Ooh, hello. Are you... Are we and you... Oh, no, no, you do want to be enemies, fine. Yeah, contrary to what I was expecting, whatever that is over there, that little kind of uh, barrowy type symbol, that was not where the vampires were. So, we might go and investigate that, and after that, I believe over in that sort of a direction, we do indeed have our main objective, the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller. So, both of those we will look into next week, and hopefully that means we will finish off Fuss Roda. And once we've got that full upgrade, oh, I love that spell. It's great flipping fun. So that will be very, very good indeed. And in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been many a true nut, and this has been Skyrim. Thank you very much, and goodbye. What the hell? All right, we've now got a Scottish zombie traveling with us. Oh, he's actually quite good now. And he's got over his drinking problem. Which is, oh, he eats human flesh. He's got some decent carrying capacity. Okay, fine, he eats people, but come on, let's not be flipping judgmental about this.